This is section 1.2, place value and names for numbers. The position of each digit in a number determines its place value. So if we have the number that looks like this, then each digit in that number has a different place value. Those digits are listed down here. So the first digit, the three, has a place value of 10 million. The fourth digit, the eight, has a place value of 10,000. And the sixth digit, the four, has a value in the hundreds. Here are some examples. Find the place value of the digit seven in each whole number. In this first number, if we circle the seven, that's the units place, the tens place, the hundreds place, the thousands place. How about in this one, if we circle the seven, that one is in the ones place. In this one, we have units, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. And finally with this one, we have units, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions. Now if we write a large number with commas in between each group of three digits, we say it's written in standard form. And each group of three digits is called a period. So the first three digits is the ones period, the second three is the thousands period, the third three is the millions, the fourth three is the billions, and so on. If we want to write the number out in words, then we write the number that's in each one of those periods, followed by the name of the period. So if we look at the number in the leftmost period, the millions period, there's a 35. Then in the thousands period, we have a 689. And in this last period, we have a 402. So this is what our number would look like written out in words. So it would be 35,689,402. And notice that we don't actually name the ones period when we're doing that. Another mistake that's common is using the word and when we're reading or writing whole numbers. We can use it when we're talking about mixed numbers and some decimal values that we'll talk about later. Here's some examples. We want to write each one of these whole numbers out in words. So this one would just be 62. This one would be 600. And notice we're not going to put an and in here. That one's 698. Now this one we do actually have two different periods represented. This first one with the 17 is in the thousands period. So we would have 17,000. Then the number that's in our next period is 403. Okay, and last of all, this time we have a number that's in the millions period, the one. So we would start out with one million. Then our next period is the thousands period and we only have a 67 there. So we would have 1,067,000. And the number that's in our last period is 599. 
Now we're going to go backwards and write each one of these numbers in standard form. So if we have 952, it's just going to look like that. Now this one, notice we have two different periods represented. So we would just start out by writing 362, and then we can put a comma just like the comma that's here. Then our number in the next period is 586. And that's the whole number. For this one, we actually have three different periods represented. So we have the millions, the thousands, and the hundreds. So we would start out with the number in our, in our first period millions, which is just a three. Then we put a comma to match the comma here. Then we have 400 in the thousands period. So we just write 400 and then another comma. Then we have 102 in our hundreds period. One other thing we can do with whole numbers is to go from standard form to an expanded form. The expanded form shows each digit that was in the original number and it tells us its place value. So if we write this one as 4,000, that tells us that 4 was in the thousands place, that 7 was in the hundreds place, that 8 was in the tens place, and 6 was in the ones place. So now we're going to write each one of these numbers in expanded form. We have 3 in the hundreds place, so we're going to write 300. Then we have 9 in the tens place. So we write 90 and then 8 in the ones place. How about this one? We're starting out with 2 in the thousands place. So we have 2,000. Then 9 is in the hundreds place. We don't have anything in the tens place because we have a 0. So we can just write 7. Now for this one, we're starting out with 4 in the millions place. Notice when we do this, we can write the digit in the same place it was in the original number, and then just fill in the rest from, from there to the right with zeros. So we have our 4 million. Then we don't have anything in the hundred thousands place because there's a zero there. So our next one would be 80,000. Then our nine is in the thousands place. Our three is in the hundreds place. Four is in the tens place. And seven is in the ones place. Now if we want to compare whole numbers, we can picture them as equally spaced points on a number line. So here's some whole numbers that would be at the very beginning of our number line. And notice that the number line continues out to the right. If we want to graph a specific whole number, we put a dot where that number is on the number line. So this would be the graph of the number 4. And when we graph two numbers on a number line, the number on the right is the greater of the two, and the number on the left is the smaller of the two. So if we have this graph, notice that we have the numbers 2 and 5 graphed. And 2 is on the left side of 5. And that means, from what we said up here before, is that 2 is the smaller number, so 2 is less than 5. We can also think about this the other way. 5 is to the right of 2. So we can also say that 5 is greater than 2. We're going to talk just a little bit about reading tables. This is a table of the four top medal winners in the Olympic Winter Games between 1924 and 2002. And if we want to 
look at a specific value in this table, for example, if we looked at the row here marked Norway, then we can see how many of each type of metal Norway won. They had 94 gold, 92 silver, 74 bronze, and a total of 260 metals. Another thing we can do with the table is compare the whole numbers in the table. So if we want to know the country with the most gold medals, we would look in the column under gold and look for the largest number out of these four. Well, the largest one of those would be 113. To find which country had 113 gold medals, we look to see which row that's in. That was in the Russia row. So the country with the most gold medals was Russia.